I swear, I swear they get together in the morning and just kind of like discuss a strategy of like, how can we destroy today's routine? Let's just, what can we do today to throw it off? No, I'm not just kidding. I don't think my kids are vindictive. Welcome to the Business of Parenting podcast. Tune in as we discuss the principles of successful parenting as a business professional. Here's your host, Jason Harris. Hey, 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 what's going on, Podcast Nation? It is Jason Harris here, and thank you for joining me on another episode of BOP, the Business of Parenting Podcast. I have like a very specific voice. I think every single time I say that, I don't know why. It's a, it's an announcer style voice. I was just thinking to myself. Anyways, I digress. I have an amazing guest with me this morning. I have the one, the only, the oh so famous, Mr. Duran Cage. Duran, what's up, man? How you doing? What's good, Jason? How you doing? <laughs> good, man. It's it's early. I got my coffee. Doing good. Yeah. Um, it's good to see you. It's uh, getting towards month end, so I know it can always get a little crazy, you know, for us. So I appreciate you taking the time to kind of, you know, jump on and talk about this, you know. And you know, we we got a chance to kind of talk a little bit before we started recording. You know, I'm you know I'm I'm no I'm no parenting expert, you know, but you know I, I think uh, learning from others people's mistakes is very valuable, and I appreciate you coming on today and just willing to be open and honest and just talk about some really cool topics. So thank you, thank you for coming on and. And jamming with me today. Hey, um, to kind of kick off today's podcast, for everybody out there that's maybe watching and listening, I love kind of starting off our podcast with a little origin story. So we got a little background. So let's kick it off with, uh, you know, the story about, about your uh, family and a little bit about your business. Yeah, well, again, thank you again, Jason, for having me on. So, yeah, just a, a little bit about me, you know, um, from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I lived all over before that uh, military brat, <laughs> excuse me, military brat. And so, but I claim Albuquerque is home because I was there for about eight years, eight or nine years. So um, while being there, after I graduated from school, started selling cars with my best friend, uh, which then led to work for Chrysler, the OEM, brought me out here to Memphis, Tennessee, the good old South, uh, did that for a little bit, then went back into retail uh, and then got into consulting work with a vendor and then started my own business uh, in 2018 called Cage Automotive. And uh, the beautiful part about getting from Albuquerque to Memphis was I did get the chance to meet a phenomenal woman, my mother-in-law, <laughs> before I talk about my wife, <laughs> who introduced me uh, to my wife. I was cooking at a dealership. And uh, she's like, man, you cook good. And she's like, you got it. You, you with anybody right now? It's like, no, not at the moment. <laughs> and she showed me a picture of her daughter. I was like, I'm screwed. But uh, anyways, oh so we get together, end up becoming great friends, end up uh, marrying each other, and then now having a family of four with uh, our oldest Alexander at 13, then our nine year old Preston James, seven year old Addison, and the five year old I think his name is Connor. But uh, but it's been fun and it's it's been a it's been a great ride, never a dull moment, and uh, it's been fun to serve them as a uh, as a husband and father. It's um, fun is a good one. Ride, <laughs> I would definitely use the word ride. I think ride. You know, we were kind of talking a little yeah. bit about this, right? You have three, I have three. Um, you know, it was. It was it was definitely a different type of world when there was two, you know, and my wife had one, and then I had one, and then the second we got outnumbered, it was moment. like. I swear, I swear they get together in the morning and just kind of like discuss a strategy of like, how can we destroy today's routine? Let's just, what can we do today to throw it off? No, I'm not just kidding. I don't think my kids are vindictive. Mm -hmm. no. um, yeah. But but that's going to be kind of our first talk today. Let's get into a little bit routine. And I think that was one of the biggest lessons I had to learn from going from two kids to three. And then for other people I've talked to many, many after that. Uh, but routine is in crazy important not only to you know the success of our business but then also the success of the business of parenting uh so let's let's get into it. what are your kind of thoughts and maybe just kind of philosophy around routine yeah so routine is so important to me because think about this if if we develop great routines into our children at an early age, imagine what that does to them in the future, like a competitive edge that, that it gives them. Because I think back on my childhood and I don't really remember my parents give me a bunch of routine. You know, a lot of us 20, 30 years ago, whatever, the routine was you woke up, you brushed your teeth, you cleaned your room, and then where'd you do next? You typically went outside, you kicked it with your buddies. But it seems like now because there's so many distractions and 
different things that kids can get into with tech that I think routine probably now is more important than ever. And not just for our kids, but for ourselves. I think that's why Mm -hmm. routine has become such a big thing because we have a lot of things pulling our energy. So like an example of routine that's important to us, hands down, and this will happen soon within the next hour, um, is when you wake up in the morning, that morning dictates your day. We we really believe that. So in the morning, you know, we really encourage our kids to have some quiet time, like to really get quiet for the first five or 10 minutes of their morning, spend time in gratitude. We, we give them a uh, little journal if they get to write in, you know, like a little gratitude journal, get in some meditation time, prayer time. We encourage them to stretch. Awesome. Uh, my wife's a big yoga person, but that's one example of a routine is just that every single morning, if they don't work on themselves, you can feel it. And I'm sure you've seen this too in your house. Mm-hmm. Like when that energy's down, like the kid comes down and they're like, hmm. and we're like, you didn't take care of yourself this morning, did you? <laughs> they're like, no, go back upstairs, take care of yourself, come back down. Because we're like, some people didn't wake up this morning. Some people couldn't see this morning. Some people couldn't speak, but yet we're all here. So we need to make sure we're thankful for that and spend time in gratitude but the morning routine is probably the most important because it kind of sets the tone for the entire day you you know what you're 100 right and that's that's not just for our kids but just even for ourselves um and i gotta be honest the morning routine is actually not something that i'm super good at um teaching right um i mean i definitely have a morning routine Mm -hmm. I, i i get up way earlier than anybody else in the house. I come down, try to grab at least a couple hours before no one else wakes up, you know, and that's, and that's how I kind of set my day for success is by having, you know, those two, three hours before anybody wakes up uh, to get some stuff done. But yeah, you're hundred percent right, man. I just, yeah, the morning routine. And I like this, you know, because we think about this from like a sales perspective, you know, we, we deal a lot with salespeople, um, you know, some of the most successful salespeople out there, you know, do have kind of this, this mental preparation, you know, in the morning, mm-hmm. you know, there's a reason why, you know, I think a lot of people work out in the morning, you know, it's getting both your mind and your body prepared for what's to come. And I, I know you got a bunch of thoughts and this is a big part of some of the training and coaching that I'm sure you do. So let's go into a little bit about that, um, both the mental and kind of the physical, you know, kind of preparation. I'll go a little bit farther down this rabbit hole because I like this. So when you're talking about the mental and the physical preparation for, for my structure, like how I do the mornings, how are you talking about for the, for the children? Both, both, because I think as parents, we have to be prepared mentally to, as much as they need to be, correct? No, you're, you're right, because it, 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 we, you can't, when it comes to the morning routines, kids can see right through us, right? Mm-hmm. So we can't, I can't sit there and tell them, hey, you need to have a morning routine. Did you take care of this, take care of that? And then me, myself, to not do that, you know, where I'm coming out crusty eyed at 730 in the morning, like you guys just go ahead and eat some cereal. So, no, you're right. It's important that I have my own routine because the the word that that I share with my wife and kids is like, man, and I'm sure you felt this, too. When you wake up in the morning and you get some time to yourself, you get to write your goals because I'm big on writing goals like that's a non-negotiable in my house. You will write your goals. But you, when you start writing your goals and planning out your vision and, you know, just getting prepped for the day and you take care of like, if you get to walk, like I've been on this walking thing lately, but man, when you've done all that, it's like, I always tell them, it's like somebody could slap me in the mouth at 11 o'clock in the morning. And it wouldn't bother me one bit because I already won. Like I did more in the first 90 minutes of the day than most people do like an entire day or a week, you know, like when you're reading, writing and taking care of yourself. So that's, that's what it does for me because if I don't do those things, the kids can call me out and I tell them to. So we hold each other accountable. So if they see me like, uh, you know, Hey guys, good morning. My, my oldest would be like, man, daddy, did you get your, did you get your gratitude in? Did you get the workout this morning? <laughs> so he'll bust me out. But that's the kind of family we have. It's just like, you know, keep it transparent, keep it honest. But yeah, once you once you take care of yourself in the morning, it really sets you up to be bulletproof for the rest of the day. Or if you do take a couple punches, it just doesn't feel as bad versus if you start off your morning with nothing and you start off with this thing. Yes. That's when I know, yes. like when I start waking up in the morning and the first thing I do is I look at this. I know I'm disconnected, like I'm not right. But when I go, like this morning, I didn't touch this thing for at least the first hour. 
mm-hmm. that's that that means that I'm in the zone, like I'm feeling good. But when I start off with my cell phone, that means I'm stressing about something. That means I'm I'm worried about either business or something personal, like I'm out of sync in my personal life. No, and and you know what I mean. As, as you're talking and kind of explaining this, I don't know why I'm thinking through my head of like being on an airplane and you know how they tell you to put your oxygen on first before you put everybody yeah. else's oxygen on first. And I don't know why this is going through my head, but yeah. this is kind of what we're talking about here. Look, there's there's self-care. I mean, how can we expect, you know, uh, our, our, ki- our kids or even our employees maybe sometime to follow into a routine if we're not getting ourselves prepared for the routine that will be that day and there's there's mental and physical checks for preparation now i'm with you 100 percent on the phone thing gosh talk about a huge one and you know i i fight it sometimes because like we'll go on vacation and i hate it i hate to say it, but when we're on vacation we're kind of like no rules here you go mm-hmm. giving them out to the kids you know and then we get back from vacation and i swear like we got to go like through this like phone <laughs> detox where it's like I, I'm up at like maybe like five thirty or six or something like that, and I see this like glow coming from my daughter's room, and I'm like, "Are you on a phone right now?" And she's like underneath the covers, like, eh, "Don't look at me." <laughs> I'm just mm-hmm. like, um, "But yeah, it, that is just not the way." I mean, this definitely will not mentally or physically prepare you uh, for the day. Now, I, let's talk a little bit about this gratitude thing because I think this is a cool idea and I don't necessarily maybe do it. So can we go a little bit farther down the the rabbit hole that is the uh, gratitude and how you kind of, you know, execute that on a daily basis? Yeah, they all have, I'll give an example, because I've got one in here. So I have composition notebooks and I've got like, they have something like this, mm-hmm. you know, just something that's not too big. But yeah, they, they, they just every single morning, just write down, you know, five to 10 things that you're super thankful for. You know, like what, what are you appreciative of and break it down to the ridiculous, like the fact that you woke up and you had a bed this morning, the fact that, you know, uh, that you can stretch and touch your toes, but that gratitude, just spending time and, and being thankful for the things that we do have. The main trigger point for that is that we don't get complacent with what we have, because I, I feel like that happens even for myself personally, like sometimes you can look up there's things that you you push so hard for, but then once you got it, it's like, it was, it's not that important to you anymore. It's like, you almost push it off to the side. And I think there's mm-hmm. power in really reminding yourself of where you've gotten, like just taking time to be thankful. And, you know, me and my wife did it this morning, just talking and just spending thanks about so many things that we're thankful for. And again, it's just those vibes that it gives off and the way that it makes you feel. So teaching kids in an early age, because I think as we get older, Jason, we we know how to appreciate things a little bit better. But I feel like kids, if we have kids that we're trying to give them a life that maybe we didn't get as kids, Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes one of the worst things that happens to them is now they become uh, complacent and they start expecting these things. Like nothing's really surprising them as much anymore because they've gotten so much or they've been fortunate but they need to make sure that they're always taking time because I don't care who you are on this planet. I mean, anything could happen today or tomorrow that Mm -hmm. could just strip almost everything away from us. And so making sure that we're spending time to be gratitude, it just changes their mindset and their attitude for the whole day to be like, you know what? I'm here, super excited to be alive. And my goal is to make somebody else's life a little bit better today. Man, I love that. I'm talking about some intentionality, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we both know uh, one of the biggest keys of uh, success uh, to being success, successful. Success. I need my coffee. Um, it's okay. It, successful. It's in okay. business <laughs> is, it, it is to be intentional with our time. Yep. You know, when we're not intentional with our time, then, you know, the day will just kind of run us. We don't necessarily, you know, run the day. And, you know, if, if, we're, if we're not intentional we'll never execute on a routine we might every once in a while we might we get lucky right like maybe some things kind of align we're like hey i executed the the routine but if i'm not intentional in my preparation leading up to the routine it may it there's a lot of it's a swiss cheese now of a routine there's a lot of open holes in there man and i love this gratitude it's being intentional gratitude and i think this is kind of a good segue into work-life balance which is our kind of our next topic you know because talk about you know trying to maintain that quote unquote unicorn that is, you know, work life balance, you know, you have to be intentional 
in those yeah. efforts. But I also think there's a lot of misconception about what work-life balance is. There's this, I know, I think people kind of see this because the, the key word is balance here. They kind of see this like this scale and this scale on one side of the scale is my work. And then the other side of my scale is this life. And for some reason they have to be completely in par. If I work 60 hours on my business and I must work 60 hours on my, on I'm at home on with my kids and everything. And that's, I don't necessarily think it's the truth. I think the, the, the term work-life balance is causes probably more anxiety and pressure than anything else out there. But let's let's talk about, you know, what is the misconceptions around work-life balance and how do you approach it? Yeah. So so my my model has been like there is no such thing as balance. Okay, like there, there, there really isn't. You know, like in, in especially like when you're in our club, when you get three or more, you can throw balance out the door. But <laughs> no different than anything else, whether business or personal, you have to break things down from maybe whatever you're trying to do. That's a big goal and break it down to the ridiculous. So I'll give you an example. If we're sitting here talking about, okay, um, how am I going to balance this out? Like it's getting crazy. I'm getting ready for a conference or I'm trying to build a business. Mm -hmm. Well, what you don't do is you set these crazy goals that you have to hit every single day where I'm going to spend time with my wife. I'm going to make sure I connect with Jason. I'm going to make sure I connect with my kids. It's going to drive you back. You know, it, it's going to drive you crazy. Right. So what I found is that breaking it down throughout the week and the whole month is what makes things a little bit more manageable from manageable from a balance standpoint. Mm. So what I mean by that is if I'm going to be gone for three or four days, traveling and doing business, how in the world is there such thing called balance? Exactly. <laughs> there is no balance in that. But what I can do is see that, okay, I'm going to be grinding for the next seven days, but for the next four days, I'm actually going to be traveling. Those three days after and in between that, I will have some four and five hour pockets on my calendar. And that's when you slide in that family time. You know, like you're really intentional with the time that you have. But then maybe the next week, it's not near as crazy. And that's when you over deliver the amount of time that you have. Because now it's like, what do they call it? The emotional deposit. You need to like overcompensate before you know something's about to go down. So that's really been effective for me. Like I communicate to my kids because it seems like that's how my business flows. It's like in seasons. And I'm sure you see this too. It's like, you can be, everything's kind of like smooth, mm -hmm. like, mm, you know, and the next thing you know, you get hit with a big project, big client or something. And it just freaking wipes you out. But what you have to do when you see that coming, as I just explained to my kids, like, Hey, daddy's going to be out for the next few days, but you know what? I've already got something planned for us on Sunday between such and such time where we're going to do some fun stuff. And then of course, if you see it, because I think a lot of time us as parents, we react to giving our kids time instead of being proactive with giving our kids time. Yes. So what I teach is like, just try to get in the forefront of it. If we know that our time is about to get pulled away or some big project, then we need to go hard leading up to that point. So then that way there's that cushion that they're like, you know what, daddy's doing his thing right now. We know he's grinding, but <laughs> I did so much leading up to it that they were, they were okay. I, you know what? I love that. And it's not necessarily about the amount of hours, but how deep, those hours yeah. are that I think make the biggest difference. You know, I mean, I, I, I kind of put this kind of into perspective, you know, it's like I, I schedule two hours a night in like literally in my phone. So my phone reminds me between six and eight for kid, for kids time, for kids time. It's just, yeah. there's a little bit of a hack there because my phone will actually go into do not disturb. So like I can't receive calls. I can't receive taxes and stuff like that. So it's like, I'm, I, I'm not, a hundred percent great at being intentional, but I'm, I'm trying, like I'm, I'm trying to put hacks in place so I can be better at it. Right. And, and there are some nights that I'm quite good at getting deep, you know, with mm -hmm. those two hours, like I can do a lot, like connection wise, growth wise, development wise, training, coaching, whatever. I, I can do a lot in two hours. If, if this is literally what's the only thing that's in front of my mind. Um, I don't execute it hundred percent. I got to get better at trying to execute this on a regular basis. Um, but, but, but you're right though. It's, it's, this is not a, an amount of hours of how we invest it. it. I think it's more of how deep is the time that we spend, but I'd love to kind of get your thoughts on how we can better that amount or get better usage of that time that we spend with the family and the kids. <clears throat> Yeah, I think it's that one's really simple. 
the way to get the best use of your time with your kids is to ask your kids what they want to do with their time versus what we want to do with that oh, time. There we go. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Because you know us as 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 parents, you know, as a as a father, what would we want to do? You know, like if I've got my nine year old son, you know, I might think it's best to just say, Hey man, let's go outside and shoot some hoops or let's go throw a ball. Mm-hmm. But let's say, you know, like my nine year old, for example, he's very hands on, right? Very in- intelligent and hands on. I'm not. Like I'm the person that I get a leak, I'm calling Task Rabbit, I'm calling my guy, he's coming over. <laughs> my nine year old, if he sees a leak, he's got the flashlight on his head. He's looking, trying to figure out what's going on. So when there's time with daddy, he wants to do something that makes me uncomfortable. Build Legos. And I'm talking about Legos. Like when you got hands my size, he's got Legos <laughs> the size of a, a fingernail. Yep. Me trying to put that stuff together is uncomfortable. However, I give that kid 15 to 30 minutes of my time building a Lego set with them. And I'm the world's greatest dad in his eyes. But if I say, Hey man, no Legos today, let's go outside and throw the football around for a little bit. Okay, dad, he would do it. But afterwards he might not have that same like, "Mm." Mm -hmm. and so that's what I've learned is that when it comes to kid time, I always am intentional about what do you want to do and what would be the, the best use of our time together that, uh, that you would like. And that's been, that's been phenomenal for me because a lot of times we just dig into what we're most comfortable with instead of letting our kids dictate our time. You know what? You're, you're hundred percent right. And, um, I was thinking about as I was listening to you, like I, I used to be actually better at executing this and then I was trying to figure out, like, I, I still do a decent job and I'm, I'm not consistent. And I think one of the biggest challenges, I think with a lot of, like a lot of other parents out there is they're working from home now, you know, and mm-hmm. you know, it seemed like, you know, when I was in the office, we had our office in Toronto, um, you know, I had a, f- it's a good commute. Like if anybody ever knows about Toronto, like you don't live anywhere in Toronto, you're always an hour or 45 minutes, between 45 minutes and an hour away, right? So I always had kind of this like hour or 45 minutes of like decompression time before I got home. So then I felt like I was like, I was like ready for the next job. Like I'm ready for the mm-hmm. next job. Okay, I left. I left this job. Now I got to go get ready for the next job, which is being the dad, right? And I think for a lot of parents, this is tough right now because there is none. Like I got, I got, I got 12 steps to go upstairs, and I'm literally, you know, right in the thick of it. There's no, and, and so if I try to decompress at all, then I end up just taking their time to use to, you know, so. It's tough, but I've been trying to figure out, and I want to I want to pick your brain. Look, I like finding rabbit holes, and I'll go down them. So this is the rabbit hole I want to go down. Is you know I I you know I used to have this decompression time so that I could reset myself for this next job. I it's very difficult now to have that time, or at least it's compressed. I don't have a forty five minute commute anymore, right? But I'd love to get your thoughts on how we can kind of deep <clears throat> decompress and then reset. So because yeah. how many times have I seen this when people come home and they just go straight to this thing. You, you know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> so what are your thoughts? How do we do that? Man, and that's, that's a, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Jason. That's one that I still have to work on because think about what we're talking about. Everything we're talking about is really about others focused. If we're really trying to make this thing work. And mm-hmm. so we're being intentional with kids and with our spouse, we're doing all these things, but when do we have time to be intentional with ourselves? And so uh, when it comes to decompressing, I normally like to do it there's like this window of time that I have between when, when I am here, because I'm not at home all the time, but when I am here to do dinner and spend time, like I really try to give my family all the time that I can between dinner and when it's time to like put them to bed. Mm -hmm. But then normally maybe just before putting them to bed, maybe like 30 minutes, everybody kind of like does their own time. Like everybody really in our house does like a decompressed time about 30 minutes before we go to sleep. So try to, you know, turn the TVs off and, or grab a book, do something that kind of sets that tone for the night. And so normally that's the same time that I do the same thing where I just like, I'll sit sit over there in a chair or something and just kind of just like think about the day. And then I decompress, I think about the day, like what went well, What did I miss? And then I pull out my calendar. I always look at the next day, like what all I have lined up because Mm. the next day starts the night before. Right. So I'm sitting there looking at everything, just checking everything out. But normally that's what we try to do for the whole house is make not just me, but the whole house, everybody, let's just chill for 35, 45 minutes alone time. If you want to watch a little something or put on some, some music, you can do that. But that's normally that time that 
I try to pencil in, even for my wife. I mean, you got to think the moms, mm-hmm. no matter what they're doing, whether they're a stay at home, which is a very difficult job, or there's somebody that's wearing both hats, they need that time as well to just let yourself decompress, chill, play some music, do something, but do it alone if possible, um, just so you can just woosaw a little bit. <laughs> But no, but it's true though, right? It's yeah. it, decompression is one thing. Then the transition is another. And you know, look, I think for anybody out there watching and listening right now, look, we're not experts. We're we're fumbling our way through this as well, just like anybody else out there. But I, I think the ultimate goal is <clears throat> to be intentional. You know, try. Yeah. You know, if 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 you just kind of let it go, you know, and you just. You know, if, if you're not structured or routine, this goes back to our very first topic. If we're not routine in the way we de- decompress yeah. or the way we transition from, you know, the one business to the business of parenting, if we're not transitioning well in between those two, you know, it can make things yeah. incredibly difficult. But no, I love this. This is a great topic. In fact, it probably could be an entire podcast on itself. Now, I do want to, I know we're getting towards the tail end of our time, but we have a third topic and I love this topic. Uh, because I think you're doing some really cool stuff, you know, bringing kids into the business, I think is incredibly important. It definitely supports kind of our previous topics around work life balance, you know, letting the kids see what happens and what is the business, you know, it makes them connected. There's so many things to it. And then of course it promotes more routine, but I'd love to kind of hear how, how you've kind of executed on bringing the kids into the business. Yeah. So, uh, the, I have to always be careful with that because I don't want, I don't want like workforces to come to my house and be like, man, what are you doing with these kids? No, I'm just joking. But no. So what I do in the house is I, I try to get intentional. I've, I've written down intentional on my paper so much, but I try to get intentional about what, again, they want and then see if there's an area in the business that they could use that talent or that skill or that gift and add that to the business. So the, the, like a real life example, my son, my oldest son, he wants to be, he wants to do like gaming and stuff like that. And, you know, his name is AC gamer. (laughs) And so in doing that, he wants to have his own YouTube channel, you know, all these other things he likes to, uh, he wants to be able to show what he's doing. And so I said, you know what, like, if you really want to learn a YouTube channel and you want to learn editing and stuff like that, I have a course that I've taken on it. I said, you should take this. And I said, and have fun with my stuff. I said, cause I don't do near enough with YouTube as I should. I said, well, why don't you just have fun and blow that thing up? I said, man, if it ever turns into something that generates some revenue, I wrote up a little contract. He gets a certain percentage of the earnings and he literally has just taken ownership of it. And it's taught me though, to not pursue perfection with them because I know when I first started editing content and doing things on camera, I wasn't the best. But it's sometimes I could be critical of other people's work, but I've just learned to let him just fail, let him just have fun, let him mess up a few subtitles. But him doing that now, he's super excited and supercharged. So when he does start his own company and he does start blowing up his AC gamer stuff, he already knows like how he wants to lay things out. He knows his content strategy. He knows how to use Canva. And I think that's cool. So just making sure that what I would tell any parent that's, that's looking at bringing either their spouse or their kid is we a lot of times again we focus on what we need to help our business but they might not be the person that helps us with that need but there could be something that's in their skill set that they could bring to the business that we didn't even think like oh my gosh dude, like this person's a genius like he can he or she can really help me out and that's what i'm excited about as my other ones grow up it's like all right what's your what's your skill set what's your gift what do you want to yes. do and then finding where I can put that in the business is, is, has been phenomenal. You know what? And it's fun. I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. It, it is kind of fun, right? When, when my two worlds collide, um, but I actually think it's pretty dang cool. I, I, I just kind of, maybe I'm like, Oh, proud Papa moment. I'm like, this is yeah. pretty cool. You know what I mean? Like it, it is, you know, my, um, it's funny that you bring up the video thing because my youngest, uh, comes to me and, you know, he's like, and he, he sees my YouTube channel and he, goes, and he watches a few videos. So he'll come back to me. I'll go, dad, who, who that person you were talking to? And I'm like, you actually watched that? Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, but he was, he wants a YouTube channel. He's nine years old. And I'm like, you know what? Um, I'll make you a deal. All right. If you learn how to put together and edit 20 videos, right. Then we'll open a YouTube channel, but only if yes. you can execute on 20 videos first. Right. And because you think people, the kids got to know, like, you know, they, 
they sense they see these YouTube influencers and they think they just kind of like flipped on a camera one day and they had millions of followers and da 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 da. I'm like, no, there's like real work that goes behind. You know, you're watching a four and a half minute video. You just don't. So so like I actually I downloaded um, iMovies on his um, on his iPad. Uh, he mm -hmm. watched like a 35 minute tutorial on it, and you know he like made this you know, this video of him and his friends playing hide and seek and he added titles and, and he added uh, some special effects and a subscribe button. And, and I'm just like, okay, man, like you, you're getting into this thing, right? But I may, I'm gonna make him do 20 before he kind of gets into it, right? Because I think, you know, a lot of people just think like getting into a business is just something, it's a light bulb that you flip on. <laughs> we both know that yeah. is not the case at all, right? Like that is not yep. the case at all. But, I, but I, I get excited, but I do have to sometimes kind of pull back my excitement a little bit because because I'm like, oh yeah, I get to do it. You know, I get. To, he's gonna be a part of the business. It's gonna be amazing. He's gonna run my whole video department. I'm like, he's nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Yep. I know what you mean exactly. It's like, yes. It's like, yes, but then, yes. No, look. Um, I I do think uh that there are ways to bring kids in uh that impact them from just kind of a responsibility perspective, right? And, you know, so like, I would, I, let's kind of go down this rabbit hole, you know, do you feel that your son's maybe a little more empowered now? And are there additional levels of responsibility he may not have learned if he wasn't given this opportunity to kind of work with you? Uh, definitely. I, I would sum it up in one word, confidence. Mm -hmm. I, I feel yeah. like yeah. his confidence has gone up because you know how it is, Jason. Like, imagine you get some content. Like, you see a podcast like this one, and then you, you take a clip where we 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 talk, we drop something that's valuable, and you turn that into a short and put that on a YouTube or whatever. And then that thing takes off, and you see a hundred views within seventy two hours. All of a sudden, you feel like, okay, I got this thing. I'm the next Quentin Tarantino. You know what I mean? Like you think you're the best, but I've noticed like the, the swagger and the confidence makes him feel good because I call that mastery. It's like whenever you get to the point where you start seeing something that you want to go after mastery in mm -hmm. and you feel that you're like, Ooh, I can, I can really take this thing to another level. I feel like that's where he's at. And that's a fun place to be when you found something that you actually enjoy doing that you would do without even getting paid for. That's when you struck gold. And, and you know what, that, that is so incredibly valuable. You know, like I, I'll be totally honest with you. When Lily, my oldest, you know, she came to me, she goes, dad, I want to, I want to be in the business. I want to be a part of the business. And I'll be completely honest. My first thought was like, yeah okay how am i gonna you know it's like it was like all right i'm already balancing like 15 other things it is it's like okay what what little task can i give her to you know but i was like i honestly kind of saw it as a chore originally out of the gate i was like okay i don't know necessarily what i'm gonna find here but i think i do need to find you know something so i had to kind of push myself a little bit to get them a little involved but you know to your point i mean that's what you get that's the return that's you know mm -hmm. like building up you know, kids' confidence in themselves is so insanely important, you know, um, especially with, I, I work with a, a younger generation and you can definitely tell, you know, with the generation I'm working with right now, um, you know, there were kids that grew up with confidence and ones not so much. And, 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 and as young adults, you can definitely see the difference in them mm -hmm. for sure. So there's so much value to it. Look, uh, Duran, I know it's towards the tail end of our time and I'm getting the ping on my phone going, come on, time to go. Um, <laughs> but I always, I want to finish off, I always like finishing off these conversations with at least one last question. Um, for any, let's say, new or upcoming parents that may or may not be listening to the, <laughs> may be listening to actually the podcast, um, what advice would you share with any new or upcoming parents? <clears throat> I, I honestly, man, I would sum up like my notes, you know, if you didn't take notes during this episode, go back through and take some notes. But the best thing I, I took as a refresher and reminder for me was just being intentional, like just be intentional in every area of your, of your family, I hate to say family business, but every area that the time that you have with your kids, when you communicate anything that you do, be intentional, but be intentional with them in mind, not I'm checking a box because that would be me that if there was one thing that I felt that I did the worst job of, like sometimes as a father, especially when I was really grinding, I was a check, the, check the box father. So it was like, check, I got with Jason, check. I got with Alexander, check. 
And that's not being intentional. That's just making sure that I can check and say that I spent a little time, but being intentional is again, more around planning, understanding. And then I like what Jason, what you said at the beginning that I want to put in is the client note or the client notebook. You're right, dude, because I have files on every single client I've ever worked with. And I don't have near the files on my kids, you know, like just documentation. So I want to get with my wife and get like their own little notebook that we keep notes in. Um, I think that's great because now you can kind of document the journey. And, yeah. then, you know, I know you and I are both like data people, like nerds, because exactly. you got to have some data. So that part I'm, I'm super encouraged about. So just being intentional uh, with your children and, uh, and documenting that journey along the way, I think is, would be really rewarding. That's awesome. I love it. No, you're hundred percent right. Like I, I, intentionality is not something, like I said, my kids didn't come with a manual. I wish they did. You know, <laughs> I could picture like, they should come with like, you know, like a car cause we're in the car yeah. business and it needs to be an automotive manual. It needs to be like, you know, that thick. And it's like yeah. when, when, when this light goes off, go to page 1126, go to section 57 B and there you go. That's what that light means. <laughs> yeah. They don't come uh, with it's, one. It's... They don't come with one. So intentionality is definitely, uh, we have to maintain that mindset, you know, I think to be successful at the business of parenting. Duran, thank you so much for taking the time to jam with me. For everybody out there watching, listening right now, would love to maybe connect with you and follow along with your journey professionally. What is the best way to do so? You can just either just Google Duran Cage with two R's, D-U-R-R-A-N. Um, I'm on uh, LinkedIn, every pretty much social media profile out there. Just search, connect me. You can send me a message anytime. My phone number's on my website on cageautomotive.com, but uh, like Jason, just here to serve, and I'd love to help you on the personal side, business side, or either just to just to jam and catch up. So, Jason, cannot thank you enough, my my New Mexico, my Albuquerque <laughs> friend, uh, for having me on, and I'm super excited to get back there and see if I can maybe ship you some I'm, green I'm, chilies. No, seriously, I'm gonna make you actually. I'm gonna make you pick me up some green chilies. But <laughs> Duran, thanks again, man, for taking the time to jam with me. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your just openness and honesty. Um, just man, very very cool. Have yourself an amazing day. Thank Thank you. Thanks. You too, Jason. Thanks for tuning in to the Business of Parenting podcast with your host, Jason Harris. Don't want to miss new content? Be sure to check out the full podcast library at strategywithjason.com to stay in the know. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Happy podcasting.